we have added what's called GD&T measures, and uh, it allows us to pull the GD&T directly from the CAD data, or we can create the GD&T directly inside our workbench. We do not pull in all the GD&T currently. Um, the measures that we are going to duplicate will be position, profile, perpendicularity, angularity, parallelism, and concentricity. You will notice that uh, we are not um, writing GDT measures for form controls. Some of you, you know, that uh, have been doing tolerance analysis for a while, you know, probably know if you're trying to measure the position of a feature, a lot of times you would measure it in multiple directions and then output the um, worst one or try to combine them or put them in a combination measure. And so we've basically done that for you. So if you write a position measure and you pick a feature, we will check uh, the top point and the bottom point, and we will measure it in five different angles, and we will output you know, which one of those was the worst from a statistical standpoint. Prior to that, we would measure multiple, you know, multiple measurements along a vector direction and then you know, look for the worst one to say that's what the position tolerance would fit within. And, you know, we're also doing this for a profile measurement. So this happens to be a plan view. If you flip this to the side, you know, we're measuring it in three corners and outputting whichever one is the worst one. So you can see, you know, if I, was doing this manually and I measured these three points. If this one had five millimeters, this is the one we'd report. <clears throat> Same thing for uh, orientation. This is just showing you, you know, top and bottom in a side view that, uh, you know, we will be picking up the maximum angle that uh, this feature would fall within. And that's how we're covering perpendicularity, angularity, and parallelism. The power of these measurements are that they are going, they're being measured back to the datum scheme. So in your part, you can have, you know, datum A, B, and C, and datum D, E, and F, and you can measure something relative to whatever your datum reference frame is that's defined. <clears throat> Here's just another feature, you know, showing the angularity on it surface where we're checking three extreme points, <clears throat> measure the vectors taken from the DRF used in the measurement, and whichever results is the largest is, oops, is the one that we report. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to just jump over to a example model, which you can see here I'm inside CATIA V5. And the key that I'd like you to notice is if I expand the uh, jumper in the CATIA part, you can see the jumper has got embedded part GDT. And if you look at the top level assembly, the top level assembly also has assembly GDT. That's what's displayed up here on the screen now. So ultimately, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just build this so that you can get a visual here. And then you deviate. So, you know, the jumper locates to the metal insert, the metal insert locates to the base. And then if I separate this, oops. If I separate this, the assembly GDT is looking for, hey, is this surface back to D, E, and F within one millimeter profile? Is this hole back to D, E, and F within one millimeter position? So old school, you know, old school, we would, you know, put a point on here and we would measure this in X and Y and, and output that variation. Here, I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to extract it as well as you'll notice inside the measurement dialog box, we now have a GDT pull down. 
So this is our typical measurements, and you see your point distance, circular interference, virtual, all of our standard measures, and now we've added this GD&T. Before I go to this one, however, I do want to, since I'm showing you that we have this GD&T here in the Katia tree, and you can see I do not have any assembly GD&T in this tree, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to come over here, and um, you can see now, you know, this is where we would update our GDT. Now we have update measures. If I click on this button, you know, I can create GDT measures for all my components, for parts only, or for just products. Well, all of my parts have got piece part GDT also hidden, and I don't want to create all those measurements. So I'm just going to say products only. And then I'm going to pick the top level. And you can see that it says, hey, I created two GDT callouts and three datums. So ultimately, it created these three datums datum D, which happens to be this surface and this surface, datum E, which is that hole, and datum F, which is that slot. And now if you come down, if you come down here, you can see that we added those datums into our DCS3, and we added a profile tolerance or profile measurement on this surface and a position measurement on that surface. Now, what I'd like you to see is prior to extracting these two measurements, we also have a point, a vector measurement measuring you know the center of that to this space in the x i guess we only need to worry about the x um, uh, um sorry let's see i don't want to uh I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and add a measurement that is a uh, point to self measurement. Oops. I'm going to just measure that point so that we have something to compare to. So now. You know, by just extracting that GDT, it wrote these two measurements, and I can do. Uh, if you look, if you look at the um, GDT, this was position of one millimeter. So we wrote this GDT, and it set the spec to plus or minus 0.5. Same thing with this profile, setting the spec to plus or minus 0.5. So let's go ahead and build this and run an analysis. And we can see if we go to this uh, surface profile, this is picking up all you know all of the contributors from building it, and it's got this new GDT value. So here you can see it says that hey, the profile tolerance that uh, will pass this note is 6.77. The GDT obviously that was written had a spec limit of, or a position tolerance of one millimeter, so the spec was set to 0.5, plus or minus 0.5, and then you can see that, you know, we're not going to meet our requirements. If I go on to, uh, if I go on to the X measurement, this is a point vector direction measurement, so then we'd have to go to this 5.7 or 5.84 for the range, because we're checking it just along a vector direction, and you can see the GD&T value says NA because uh, we're not checking it in all four corners. So the idea with the GD&T measures is, you know, old school, we might write four measurements in all the corners and one in the middle. 
and I'll put the worst one. Or with the GD&T measure, you can just pick the surface and we automatically check, you know, the extremities. And that's the same thing for, you know, the position tolerance. If I go into that. So we're severely out of spec. And of course, we're severely out of spec because you can see these very, very large geofactor numbers. And that's because this L bracket is located with these two pins and float and position tolerance causes large variation. So what I would like to do is separate this and I'm gonna just add some tolerancing on this feature here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say gd and I'm gonna pick this part. No, that's not the part. Hey Gary, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Um, it, can you maximize your Katia window? Oh, absolutely, thank you. I'm, I apologize, everybody. It looks a lot nicer, thank you. Easier to see that way. Yeah, so, one of the things that I wanted to show you, which I thought was very interesting, is uh, if you look, if you look at the jumper, you can see the bottom surface is datum A, that surface is perpendicular to A, then it's datum B, perpendicular to um, AB, then it's C, you know, and then we have, you know, the piece part tolerances on this feature. Just because I thought this was interesting, I hope I don't run out of time, I'm gonna add some more GDT to this part. And I'm gonna add a surface profile and pick that feature. And I'm gonna set it to zero. Back to A, B, and C. And I'm going to turn my mesh on and zoom in and hit deviate. And what I'd like you to notice is even though this has got a piece part profile tolerance of zero, you can see that surface is moving. That surface is moving because of the orientation on datum B and C. So everything else has got to track it. That's, you know, part of the power of tolerance in your parts all back to your datums or subdatums. So now if I go back, if I go back into this, yeah, I did it again. If I go back into the GD and T here. I'm gonna make this two millimeters, and then I'm gonna add perpendicularity 0.5. To data main. And I uh, put these points on there so if we deviate, we can see that surface tipping and rocking as well as the uh, location tolerance. So now so now I put profile and perpendicularity on here. And now if I want, I can actually measure the same GD and T. So I'm gonna come in here and say GD and T, add, pick my feature. Oh crap. Did I add the GD and T again to the wrong feature? So, T, pick this part, add. Profile, add, pick this surface. And then I'm gonna also go ahead and change this to perpendicularity. Back to just A and say, okay. 
So with that one dialog box, I just wrote two measurements, and now you can see in my tree over here, I have GD and T measurements, profile and perpendicularity. I didn't give that a very good name, but so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and run an analysis in the separated position so that I can look at these two measurements. And if you look at the profile tolerance, there's my two millimeters that I put in. And if I look at the measure two, which is perpendicularity, there's the 0.5. But what I'd like to point out is when I come in here, oh, you can see that it's picking up my perpendicularity tolerance is um, picking up G tal 11, which was my perpendicularity, as well as some of the perpendicularity from the datum. So this is, to me, is really cool. That's what I wanted to show you. So the, you know, the key part of this section is that we now have GD&T measurements that we can write directly inside our workbench, or you can extract them from the CAD system.